Welcome. The following video or audio are the study of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse of the King James 1611 Bible. Our family welcomes you to our household Bible ministry time. You may watch and listen with us. Our goal has been from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Each chapter by chapter we try. And topical preaching and teaching aids you can find by searching different topics. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Come and appreciate the word of God for our spiritual growth, our development in the word of God by these lessons. Please feel, feel, please feel welcome to upload and share our Bible study with family and friends. Like us, subscribe, write a comment, let us know you heard the message. The video or audio are not copyrighted and should be used and not abused. Thank you. Hebrews chapter 2. Therefore, we read in chapter 1, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard. Talking about the power of Jesus Christ, who Jesus Christ is, God, made lower than the angels for us. We need to give heed to what God has to say about Jesus. What Jesus had to say. To the things which we have heard. Talking to the Jews that heard Christ. To the life, the, the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Listen, listening to what Jesus had to say. Give heed. At least at any time we should let them slip. It's a warning for anybody who hears what the Lord has to say. And within time, you just forget it. You don't do nothing. Well, I'll do it later, then you forget. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and, ever trans yeah. and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward. So, when we sin, the Word of God says there is a judgment. There is reaping and sowing for our sins. And many people who do go away and live their wicked life, nothing happens to, happens to them. Job complains about these people, you know, their, their lives are wonderful, they, they produce children, their animals are well, they just seem to be good. And yet we've been talking about the great white throne judgment in chapter 1. For without Jesus Christ, if your name is not in the Lamb's book of life, you're not going to do well. Because watch, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? What is the gospel? That Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried and he rose again. And the Bible says that is a great salvation. That is the only salvation and he's telling these Jews Hebrews who've come out of the law who are now coming into this thing being you know saved by the Messiah Jesus Christ you know what that law is nothing this great salvation that we offer to you by Jesus Christ that finished work how are you going to escape which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord the Lord Jesus Christ. He told those Jews in their company what they need to do. He told them about the laws. He told them he was the way, the truth, and the life. And without him, what are you going to escape with? The law ain't going to work. Your works not going to do you no good. When Jesus came to the Jews, the Gospels record that it was a sick perverted nation he had to heal over the all over the place they were possessed with devils well that's not the condition to be right with God and was conformed unto his unto us the Jews Hebrews by them that heard him obedience brings you to salvation God also bearing them, the Jews, witness, Hebrews, both with signs and wonders, 
three and a half years of Jesus' ministry, and with diverse miracles and the gifts of the Holy Ghost, according to his own will. When Jesus healed, when he fed the 5,000, when he fed the 4,000, when he went about taking care of the devils, that was the will of God. That was for Jews require a sign. That was to prove to the Jews who he was. For unto the angels hath he not put in subjection the world to come, whereof we speak. Angels are not going to rule anything. Rain angels will have no power to reign. Jesus Christ, but one David in a certain place testified, saying, what is man that thou art mindful of him? That's Psalms 8, 4 through 6. That's what David said. So there's inspiration being recorded by David to us. Or the son of man that thou visited him. Listen, all God's love and all his care and all his praise and all the throne and all the power and everything that there is to be has been given to the Lord Jesus Christ, not angels. And when you look at religion, religion, angel, there, angels, this, worship of angels, doing this for angels, angels doing this, and ain't about angels. Thou madest him a lower, a little lower than the angels. So man, Jesus Christ becoming man, man is lower than the angels. Why? Because he's a sinner. A third of the angels sin. So this would have to be the angels that do retain their glory with God. That don't sin. They don't die. They don't sin. They are forever in the presence of God. But they don't have the power of Jesus Christ. They can't tell Cornelius how to be saved. Thou crownest him, Jesus, with glory and honor, and didst set him over the works of thy hands. Crown him with glory and honor? All right, in the church that has happened, but crown us? That's at the second advent, where he wears a crown. And he comes for the Jews. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. Jesus. He will be king of kings and lord of lords and the ultimate scepter. The ultimate throne. Better than David and Solomon. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. The Bible says he's going to bruise Satan. For, you know, you know what the Catholic Church says about that? It says it's Mary. And you can find pictures with Mary stepping on the serpent. For in that, he put all in subjection under him. He left nothing that is not put under him. All in all will be under the rule and authority of Jesus Christ one day. Not right now. When Satan came to Jesus and said, hey, listen, you fall down and worship me, I'll give you all the kingdoms. Jesus did not rebuke him. As far as, oh, Satan, you're wrong. It's mine. You got the whole world in your hands. It's not about Jesus Christ. It's about Satan. The world that lies and steals and cheats. That's not of Jesus Christ. That's of their father, Satan, John 8, 44. So we are reading future prophecy. The Jews that we read as a family today, we want a king, we want a king. Well, here he is. This is the king they wanted when he was going to the cross. This is why they rejected him, because he did not overthrow the Romans. But he will. And all power will be put under the sun. That's what Israel wanted. They just didn't see the suffering. They didn't see the, 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 the killing. They didn't see the blood atonement of the Messiah, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. 
They saw, hey, here he comes, here he is. And when he de destroys Rome, all right. When he feeds us forever, like he fed. Listen, John chapter 6. Oh, we came to you because you fed us. And Jesus said, listen, that's not the thing. You only came to me because I fed you with bread. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, for the sufferings of death. Isaiah 53. Bring that Jew to Isaiah 53. Crowned with glory and honor, the second advent. And he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. Now notice it said, should every man Christ settled the account for every man ever to be born and that was born the should is not all men that will see them many will go the broad way so when man ends up at the great white throne judgment they are condemned because the price has already been paid and they didn't take it that atonement is for every man but the should says not all will receive it for it became him god whom all things jesus christ god jesus jesus god by whom are all things he made everything we saw that in chapter one the creator everything that is is here to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering again that's a Jewish captain of salvation Joshua when he has a man come in he's the captain Israel is to rule by military force they are to occupy a piece of land the sword of the Lord the, the sword of Gideon made captain Jesus Christ salvation by his sufferings to be a leader of Israel for both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified Jesus and those that do believe are all one how's that those that are in Christ are one with Christ so how are you going to be separated and Paul spoke about this in Romans, you know, tribulation, trouble, problem. Who shall separate us from the love of God? You can't when you're one. For which cause he, Jesus, is not ashamed to call them brethren. Jesus said, you deny me, I'll deny you the, the rain. But if you do not deny me, I will confess you before the Father and who? Look at the chapter, look at the reference in chapter 1 and 2. Before the angels, the Gospel of John. If you don't deny Jesus Christ, he will step before the Father and those angels in glory say, Hi, this is my son. Because he's God. This is a person that has believed on my name and I will write his name in the Lamb's Book of Life. And the Bible says in Luke that the angels rejoice when one sinner repented. When those angels rejoice, what is it? It's that name being declared. He's a child of God. He has believed on the blood atonement of Jesus Christ. That gets the angels rejoicing. They didn't get the Pharisees rejoicing. Look at all the times that Jesus healed people and took care of people. And then you see the remarks of the Pharisees. They were angry. It's the Sabbath day. Who cares? He made someone whole. Well, he did on the Sabbath day, meaning... He could have waited to Monday. Yeah, if it was your own condition, you would want to have done it right away. Saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. How's that? One day the name of Stalin was mentioned through heaven and written down the Lamb's Book of Life. In the midst of the church. Will I sing praise unto thee? We'll be all gathering to sing praises to the Lord Jesus Christ. 
To God be the glory through the Lord Jesus Christ. Great things have done. A great salvation. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, these are written in the Bible by scripture. Behold, I and the children which God has given me will be all together in unity as one, worshiping Jesus Christ, as one body, to the glory of God and his Son, what he's done for us. You know, what's going on here? Okay, this is the book of Hebrews. What's he doing? What's he talking about? He's talking about the, the nation of Israel finally being unity under one. Where the Bible spake about one time that the earth rung out when they brought the ark. It pleased that here's the ark of God. God's amongst us. Here's this time of the Jews are looking for. Complete harmony. Complete peace. Com complete relaxation in the promised land. Of who? That Messiah. The anointed of Jehovah. God. Jesus Christ. And in this day and age, it's even more. Those Jews will not get the land. They will get to be an inheritance with Jesus Christ, the millennium. And then they'll be going to New Jerusalem as the bride of Christ. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. I'm flesh and blood. Cut me, I'll bleed. Put nails and beat Jesus Christ with, with rods and with uh, cow nine tails, he bled. Acts 20, 28, that blood was God's blood. Jesus Christ had the same flesh. He had blood, but it was sinless blood, God's blood. But when they put those nails in him, he bled. When they put those thorns upon his head, he bled. He was 100% man and 100% God. This is, this is chapter 2. This is to the Hebrews. This is telling the Hebrews who that Messiah was. The perfect salvation that the law could not do. An ultimate reign of the Messiah that David and all the kings couldn't do. And himself likewise took part of the same. And through death he might destroy him that has power of death. That is the devil. Old Testament spoke of the devil. Spoke of Satan. But it never spoke of anybody ever beating David. Death, excuse me. David didn't beat death. Solomon died. The only one that never died was Enoch and Elijah. Elisha died, Moses died, Adam died, no one beat death. Hello Hebrews, the one that proclaimed to be your Messiah of Jehovah, who is Jehovah, he is the one that conquered Satan, he is the one that can conquer death. And we know that by the scriptures that when he died, paradise went up to heaven. Those that were in Abraham's bosom were set free. Behold the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. So they, Satan loses. Satan uses death as a weapon. Uh, and deliver them who through fear of death. That's a weapon of, of Satan. Oh, I don't want to die. And religion will use that tool too. Well, you know, if you don't if you don't do what our church says, you can't be buried here. You can't do it. You can't get out of purgatory. You can't get magazine. You can't have babies in the afterlife. You can't get the virgin. They will use fear of death. That's Satan. Where all their lifetime subject to bondage. Now, who's the there? That's the Hebrews. They didn't want to die. They had no assurance of salvation, even though they did everything they did by the temple and by the law. There was no Jew that was 100% but Jesus Christ. The next one that was closest to Jesus Christ was John the Baptist. They had no assurity when they were to die if they were to go off to Abraham's bosom. 
and Satan would use that. Where's it written in, in your Old Testament that you can have? It's written in the New Testament. These things have I written unto you that you may know you have eternal life. David and them didn't have that. And Satan against the tools of the Hebrews would use death as a fear tactic. He's a great, I don't know what he is, but he, he's, were all their lifetime, lifetime subject to bondage under death. They would die. But they had no assurance. For verily, he took not on him the nature of angels, that's Jesus. He did not come as an angel. So when religions proclaim that their angel has visited them is the means of salvation, it's a bunch of baloney. But he took on him the seed of Abraham, and John 1, 11 says, he came unto his own. What is that? Jesus was not colored. Jesus was not American. Jesus was Jewish Hebrews. He chose disciples that were Jewish. He was among the Jews. When some Gentiles came to him, hey, no, I'm here for the people of Israel. I'm here for Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. He, he did take care of some Gentiles, but not all the time. Jesus Christ came of a woman whose seed she was found to be of David, of Judah, of Adam, Luke 3, Jewish. How do, you, how do you not say he wasn't Jewish? So how do you proclaim, I am saved as a Christian, and you hate and despise Jews? How's that one? Aren't those people are going to be realized when they get to the great white... Listen, if you can't believe Jesus is a Jew, you're not saved. Can you imagine those people standing before God one day, Nazis, KKK? They don't like Jews, they hate Jews. Anybody else that hates Jews? Imagine them standing before the Jew at the great white throne judgment and say, Hey, depart from me, you work in iniquity, I never knew. But didn't we have the great white race? Yeah, that's a yeah. But it's not about the great white race. The great race is Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Oh, we didn't like them. Yeah, I know. And since you didn't like them, you didn't like me. And what's one of the things that Jesus speaks about in Matthew? about you helped my brethren you took care of my people well, who were they Jews what's the seven year tribulation period called the time of Jacob's trouble so Jesus came as a Jew of Abraham that's Jewish wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren Jewish So you can throw Hollywood movies out. And I've been in a church, I, I, I swear, it, I've been in a church, colored church, where the stained glass windows of Jesus and 12 apostles were colored. As, as, as colored as chocolate. They're wrong. And Hollywood is wrong. You just had a passion. Yeah, but that's not Jesus. Sorry. Okay, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God. Now, do you see any relationship between the Hebrews there? You're back in the law. You're back. Listen, every Hebrew that would read that right now, the high priest, they would know exactly what this writer is speaking about. They would know from Aaron, his sons, and all the way to the last one. I know who you're talking about. That's the one that would, would, would go in once a year for the atonement of his sins and for the nation of people. He is the one that is sought by God of Abraham. It had to be Abraham. We are talking Jewish, not Gentile. Hebrews is a Jewish book, and we're looking at in the law. 
and what what the writer I keep on wanting to say Paul it could be Paul I don't know what the writer is saying now he, he's referencing remember the stories that your mama and your dad and your grandpa told you about the high priest you remember those stories young man you remember reading your Old Testament and there in the story you remember going to temple and hearing about the, the, the high priest you know about what you're supposed to learn There's a greater high priest. He has shown up. You've heard him. His name is Jesus. Not only is Jesus Jehovah. I told you we're speaking Jewish here. Not only is Jesus Jehovah. And we read in the Gospels that Jesus said, I am the prophet that Moses said would be a prophet like unto me. It's in the gospel. The writer of Hebrews says, not only is he Jehovah, not only is he that prophet that Moses spoke about, but he is the high priest of Aaron. And what happened to all the high priests? What we just read. They died. They're still in the grave. The high priest now we're talking about, Jesus Christ, Acts chapter 1, over 400 people seen walked the earth after his death and resurrected, was, was called to the Father to seat at the right hand of the throne of Father, Jehovah. No high priest has ever done that. Now the Jew would understand that. High priest of things that pertain to God, all the offerings, especially the Day of Atonement, that one time a year when that one special atonement was made for the nation. Well, guess what? Jesus made one atonement, and he did not have to go into the holy place, the most holy place, for himself. He's sinless. He walked right into that holy place, the most holy place, with the blood for the sins of all man. And when the high priest came out of there, he closed that veil. When Jesus did not come out of that veil, he ripped it. I'll show you something, boys. I'll show you something, priest. Now, let me ask you a question. What would happen to a high priest if he walked in the holy place and went, God will, you're dead. So what we're seeing now is Jesus Christ is that person that God had prophesied about, he is that person, he is that priest, he is that king, prophet, priest, king, there he is, the Messiah. This is the one sent by Jehovah for you. To make reconcil reconciliation for the sins of the people, the high priest made reconciliation of his own sins. With the sins of the people. Jesus did not make have to make any reconciliation for his sin. Because he was sinless. So what this verse is saying right here. Your high priests were fault. Because of the wages of sin. They died. Satan used that. Jesus Christ came up. He beat Satan at the death. He beat the sins. And he went into the most holy place. Sinless with his blood. And made atonement for the people. And he ripped that veil. For in that he himself has suffered. What suffering did the high priest ever have? Being tempted. He is able to succor them that are tempted. So by his temptations, he can take care of us in our temptation. Oh Lord God, I am so much pain. You want to know how much pain Jesus was in? Oh, Lord, everybody's left me. I'm all by myself. You want to count all the times Jesus was alone? Lord, I don't have nothing. You want to count what Jesus had when he died? Lord, they're, 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 they're criticizing me. You want to see what they did to Jesus? Lord, they're using me with the food that he fed the 5,000, 4,000. The sufferings that Jesus went for us as our high priest. We can go to him and he can put his arms around a child of God and say, I understand. I know exactly how you feel. 
What high priest ever suffered all the sufferings that everybody ever suffered? None. So now we see Jesus as Jehovah. We see Jesus and the angels that knocks out many religions. We see Jesus as Jewish. And we see Jesus as the high priest. We are recognizing Jesus to the Jewish people on who he is. It's a book to the Hebrews. For the Hebrews. 